friendship could be. My little pony. Until you all shared its magic with me. Big adventure. Tons of fun. A beautiful heart, faithful and strong. Sharing kindness. It's an easy feat. And magic makes it all complete. You have my I think Granny Smith has finally gone senile. Yep. Or not. That's what I said. Now I've been doing this ever since I was a little pony. So be warned, pickle pear. Wow, she even forgot Apple Bloom's name. Just kidding, I know it was a term of endearment. Now while you sweep, I'll get to the other something here. Oh, pony feathers. So anyway, zap apples are coming. Zap apples are magical rainbow colored apples that are a somewhat rare occurrence that seem to be caused by storm clouds to the apple trees that are closest to the Everfree Forest. And it's a big deal for the apple family to be able to harvest and sell them. So of course Diamond Tiara and her dad, Filthy Rich, show up while Granny Smith is making Apple Bloom do something embarrassing. Can we just talk about these bunny costumes for a second? I love how Granny Smith is really getting into the role, not to mention how it seems to change their anatomy. Cartoon logic right there. Oh, you poor, poor thing. Apple Bloom actually wasn't embarrassed by Granny Smith. I've been looking forward to making Zap Apple Jam for years. But Diamond Tiara is, of course, going to do her best to change that. Apple Bloom in that bunny suit, I can't even. Thank goodness you're here on the farm and not in town where every pony could see you. So now Apple Bloom is suddenly aware of how goofy Granny Smith acts and is super embarrassed about being out in public with her. Of course, Granny Smith isn't self-aware enough to notice. Boy, hello, Bee, Beatrice, Beecher. Or maybe she doesn't care. Are those fillies your friends? Hello, half pints friends. Oh my god, these two. It's gonna be hard to avoid breaking my no-swearing rule for these videos. I'd like to get back to the farm, fast. All done, smelly belly. It's Apple Bloom, Granny Smith. So there is an ongoing event called Family Appreciation Day, and Filthy Rich is making a speech to cheer Lee's class. Everyone but Diamond Tiara is asleep. Watch, Sweetie Belle. That might be best face right there. Thank you, Mr. Filthy. I love how Filthy Rich doesn't like to be called by his first name. So, next Monday is Apple Bloom's turn. Naturally, Applejack and Big Mac will be too busy harvesting zap apples to participate. Apple Bloom's Granny Smith isn't working harvest. She could come. That one, that's a splendid idea, Diamond Tiara. Apple Bloom, you shall bring in Granny Smith on Monday. And once again, Cheerily is a lousy teacher. How does she not pick up on what's going on here? And why is she letting Diamond Tiara choose who Apple Bloom will bring in? Are you guys sure that Zap Apples are edible? They seem like a curse. <laughs> Granny Smith is being weird again. Court Marshal! <laughs> Meanwhile, Apple Bloom is pretending to be sick. Apple Bloom's sick! Looks like she might have to stay home all week. <laughs> Perfect as a Piccadilly pear. That was kind of awesome. The next day is Saturday, so Apple Bloom is running out of time. We can't move Family Appreciation Day, so let's move Harvest Day instead. The CMC try harvesting the Zap Apples early, but that doesn't work. Well, I guess it would be out of character for the CMC to do anything the easy way. Instead of Apple Bloom getting to school early on Monday and pulling Cheerilee aside and saying Granny Smith is sick and can't make it in today, they invite Cheerilee over and do a weekend at Bernie's routine while Granny Smith is asleep. Of course it is! <laughs> Though this bit is pretty hilarious. I need to tell you that I can't make the presentation on Monday after all. And Apple Bloom does a good Granny Smith impression. Well, I gotta share the flowers and water the sheep. It almost works because of how dumb Cheerilee is. I think we're supposed to buy that she can't see clearly through the window, but come on. But naturally, Granny Smith wakes up at the worst time. Who asked me to come here to tell me that you wouldn't be making it to Family Appreciation Day? Granny Smith is like, this is normal. See you Monday! So now that Granny Smith knows about Family Appreciation Day, Apple Bloom is screwed unless she can convince Granny Smith not to go. <laughs> 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 
Meanwhile, the zap apples are now ready to be harvested. Don't you worry, Flipper the Jibber. I'll be back in time to make that jam. It's Apple Bloom, Granny Smith. Anyway, they've given her a fake telegram from Uncle Apple Strudel inviting her to visit him, and she immediately forgets about Family Appreciation Day as planned. She got called out of town on account of a family emergency. Or so she thinks. Granny Smith shows up with Apple Strudel in tow. I love that he wears lederhosen and generally looks like a German stereotype because Strudel. <laughs> Stuff like this is why I love this show. Long ago when I was a little pony, History time. So back before Ponyville was founded, Granny Smith's family were travelers who collected seeds to sell. Look at Philly Granny Smith. Pa was the finest seed collector in all Equestria. Anyway, at this point they ended up in Canterlot where they met Princess Celestia. Then Princess Celestia saw that we were Plum Tucker and hankering to find our forever home. Looks like her pa had a thing for the princess and her ma wasn't too keen on that. She doesn't mention that part. Anyway, Princess Celestia basically gave them the patch of land that would eventually become Ponyville. They started building on it and planted their seeds, but it would take them a while to grow and they were getting low on stored food. So Granny Smith, I wonder what her name was back then. I know of one fanfic that called her Annie Smith. She went into the Everfree Forest. There were dangerous animals in there, but of course, if there were animals, there had to be some food for them to eat. Where she discovered zap apples that were luckily ready to harvest. I had never seen anything that bore this kind of colorful fruit. I turned and there before me stood the timber wolves. Okay, those are kind of awesome and scary. She made it back to the farm where she scared them away by banging pots together, which is what she was doing in the beginning of the episode. Apparently, zap apples attract them. My pa and I planted those special apple seeds, and before our eyes, they grew like wildfire. So it turns out that zap apples are really particular. Not only do they have to be picked on the same day they grow or they'll disappear, but making jam out of them involves a lot of very specific actions that look weird if you don't know the context. I learned that you gotta be extra friendly with the bees, otherwise their honey won't taste rightly sweet to mix in with the zap apples. She must have literally tried every random thing she could think of. Like, I wonder how many things she tried before figuring out that you have to wear a bunny suit while singing to the water. <laughs> Pretty crazy to think about. So every weird thing we saw Granny Smith doing earlier was actually necessary for making zap apple jam. It was extremely successful and they had a partnership with the riches. Like stinking rich, Diamond Tiara's great grandfather. Matter of fact, the first thing he ever sold was my zap apple jam. It attracted a lot of ponies, some of whom decided to stick around, and Ponyville was formed. And that is how Ponyville was founded. Well played, Granny Smith. If it weren't for my Granny Smith, your daddy wouldn't have barnyard bargains. Yeah, take that, you little shit. But she's just a kooky old lady. Case in point. She is the most amazing pony in all Ponyville. So Apple Bloom and Granny Smith bond over making Zap Apple Jam, and it's adorable. Who wants to help Granny sing to the water? We do! We do! Diamond Tiara! <laughs> but Dad! And so ends Family Appreciation Day. So this is a pretty good episode with a lesson along the lines of respect your elders because you may not always understand them, but they've got years of experience on you and probably know what they're doing even if they forget your name half the time or something. And it does a good job there. Granny Smith really seems like she's lost it in the early parts of the episode. Though if you pay attention to Applejack and Big Mac, they don't seem concerned about it, so clearly they know what's going on. This is mostly an Apple Bloom episode, but it more or less becomes a Granny Smith episode towards the end, when she reveals her amazing past. Speaking of Granny Smith, this younger version of her looks a lot like an early drawing of Applejack by Lauren Faust that ended up going unused. Speaking of which, it's interesting to learn that the Apple family, who is basically the heart and soul of Ponyville, were the ones who founded it in the first place. We've also got another legitimately threatening monster with a punny name in the form of Timberwolves. I don't have too much else to say about them other than the level of detail on them is really impressive. They look even better when they show up later, but I'll cross that bridge when I come to it. 
And speaking of monsters, how awful is Diamond Tiara in this episode? It'd be bad enough if she saw Apple Bloom was already embarrassed by Granny Smith and just decided to give her a hard time about it, but she saw Apple Bloom having fun with her grandmother and just poo-pooed all over her good time, practically giving her a complex about it, and basically tried to get her to turn on her own grandmother. What a miserable little butthead. Speaking of families, next up is Baby Cakes. See you then. Don't fret. I forget things all the time. Now, I'll get you. Uh, yeah, something.